Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Midweek Mentor. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Also, if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, go ahead and like, comment, and share. It really helps us get the content out and shared with everyone that we would love to see this. So we're gonna continue this conversation that we've been having on race, on the issues facing our country today. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about conflict. Conflict, because with diversity, if that's our goal, and it is, we wanna bring diversity into the church, we wanna bring diversity into our circles, then we have to understand that conflict comes with diversity. It just does. When, when you want to introduce differing uh, opinions, different backgrounds, you need to understand that conflict comes with that. And so we have to be equipped in how to deal with conflicting opinions, different points of view, and we want to deal with that the right way because that can be a stumbling block for us if we want to introduce diversity into our environment and we're not able to resolve conflict, then we're going to be shooting ourselves in the foot. So before we get started and I, we, before we dive into the Word to begin to learn about how we can bring this into our world, um, I want to tell you about getting heckled online. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a troll? Who's heard of a troll before? And I'm not talking about Disney movie troll or I don't think Disney has trolls. I don't know where what cartoon has trolls? Like the trolls like the trolls that you can mess up their hair and you can make their hair all No, not those kind of trolls. I'm talking about internet trolls. I'm talking about the trolls that just kind of wait for you and they follow you around and they want to they want to poke at you. I've been trolled before. It's awful. I hate it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how much I want to share about this. Oh, it's fine. So a few years ago, I had this group of people, a very small group, just like one or two or three people that had this kind of bizarre view of Christianity and they were really, really um, about some Old Testament scriptures and kind of not paying attention to some of the nuances of how Jesus came and introduced, introduced uh, the New Testament and the New Covenant. And <laughs> we were doing something, it was, it was around Christmas time. And so we had Christmas tree out and I had this, these people trolling me about Christmas trees. You can't do that if you're a Christian. You can't have a Christmas tree if you're a Christian. I'm like, Man, what the, what is going on here? It was bizarre. But then they just kept on following and, you know, poking around and commenting and kind of just being an, a nuisance. But, but truth be told, uh, this is a common occurrence. People live online, and if they see something, it, it almost feels like they're looking for something they disagree with. If, if their, their lot in life, their goal in life is to live online and look for people they disagree with and poke at them and, and poke at them. But I want to tell you that for Christians, that if you are a Christian and or if you're thinking about becoming a Christian and, or wanting to adopt Christian values into your life, I gotta tell you, this is not for you. This is not for you, and I'll tell you why. Because in Matthew 18, and we're gonna read it today, there is a right way to deal with conflict. There's a right way, if, someone, if you have a problem with someone, or if you have a problem with the way somebody says something, you have a problem with the, what somebody does to you, there is a very clear path drawn for us that we can move through. And it's in Matthew 18, and we're going to start in 
verse 15. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 goes like this. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. Notice the face-to-face emphasis. Go privately. You, you and them privately. Talk about it. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Now, notice he didn't say, go post it online for thousands of people to see. No, there's still this very personal, there's this very personal nuance to dealing with conflict. Two or three witnesses. Verse 17, if the person still refuses to listen, Take your case to the church. So that's a specific group of people, the church, your, your, your community, your community. If he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or corrupt tax collector. I heard a, I heard a crazy teaching once. I heard a very, it's kind of beautiful though, um, that the way we treat pagans and, a, and corrupt tax collectors is we try and win them back to the Lord still. Like Matthew, the book of Matthew is written by tax collector. <laughs> and Jesus says, treat them like a tax collector. A tax collector is someone that you can, you can still have compassion on, but you can still try to, you can still try to win over. Now that's, a, that's a midweek mentor for another day for sure. But then he goes on to say this. Jesus goes on to say this. I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I tell you, also tell you this. If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered, for two or three gather as many followers, I am there among them. Okay. Diversity is going to bring conflict. It just is. And if you caught last week's message, um, you know the Sunday message, not midweek mentor message, but this last Sunday's message at Lifeline Church, you, you'll, you'll remember the statement, we're better together, but better doesn't always mean easier. Better is not easier. Working with people that you're not familiar with working with people that don't have the same worldview as you, working with people that don't have the same background, the same upbringing as you, is not easy because you come with different points of view. You come with different thoughts and different, and that's going to bring conflict. It's going to bring differing of opinions. Every married couple knows this because you're locked in to this marriage. You're locked into this union where you And they are just different and you just have to work it out. It's better to be married. I think I I like married better, but it's not always easier. It's not always easier. So Jesus is giving us an outline here in the Bible to say, hey, there's a right way and a wrong way to deal with conflict. And I think this so applies to the world that we live in today where online Conflict is reigning supreme, and I would, I would argue that debating online is almost never appropriate. Al- almost, but almost never appropriate, because it doesn't deal with any of the things that Jesus said here. There's a face-to-face element. There's a personal element. And, and, and the scripture goes on to say this right after that, right after that in verse 21, Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times. Jesus replied, but 77 times, 77 times. And of course, if you study that out, that just is, is, is an expression for you need to continually you need to continually forgive them and it's going to be easier to do that everybody if we can get face to face with people face to face with people 
the best way to a person's heart is not through their stomach. It's through their face. <laughs> the best way to a person's heart is not through their stomach. It's through their face. We need to get face to face with people. If we care about people, if we care about, and what's our goal? Our goal. I think in, in the area of, of race and reconciliation, because well, our goal here is reconciliation race reconciliation in our country. We want the divide to be eliminated, right? And we want to see reconciliation happening between people groups. That's what we want to see. And I think most people are very reasonable. Most people are thinking very clearly. Most people are thinking and, and looking at the big picture and, and knowing that injustices are awful but what we're seeing and what we're being fed by our media online is just so, so conflicting and so disastrous that we're being fed this, this lie. I don't want you to buy into that. I, I want you to, to believe and move forward with the fact that everybody is really wanting this reconciliation. Everybody's wanting this. And what we need to do is we need to get face to face with people. We need to have conversations with people. And, and if you can't discuss things face to face with people, then maybe you shouldn't be discussing it with them. I've got a, I've got a couple people though that are keeping in touch with me and we can't get face to face as often and, and we're emailing back and forth and we're, and we're, we're working out and navigating how I'm bringing content and my friends of color are, are, are giving me input and they're giving me different perspective. And I covet that. I need that. I want that. I'm asking for that. But even the nature of, even if it's digital, you know, it's, it's an email, it's direct, you know, it's coming straight to me and it's straight from their heart. It's not like here, I'm going to post this meme and I hope they see it. How stupid, how, how stupid. Okay, if, if, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to aggravate too many people. So let me just dial it back. I was about to get worked up there. I'm gonna dial it back. Get face to face with people, all right? We want, we wanna see diversity happen. We want to bring diversity into our world, into our world, our personal world, our circle. We want to bring diversity in there. But you need to know that's going to bring conflict. You need to know that's going to bring differing points of view that you are not familiar with. And so we need to know that the way to deal with those conflicts is face to face with a heart that's ready to forgive, forgive, forgive. This is what Jesus teaches us out of Matthew 18. And I hope this has really blessed you. I apologize for my allergies and my eyes. The wind today has just destroyed me. But thank you for tuning in and sticking around to the end of this. Forgive each other out there, okay? Read Matthew 18 for yourself. Get back in there and, and, and see what Jesus has to say about this. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. Don't forget to like, share, and, and comment if you're listening on Instagram or Facebook. We really appreciate all of your engagement and we're so grateful that we're going to begin to see diversity. We're going to see more diversity in our church. We're going to see more diversity in our personal circles. And I'm so grateful for you. Let me pray for you today before we part ways. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray blessing over every single person who's listening to this video. God, I ask that you would open our hearts and our, our minds to understand more fully how we can we can navigate this conflict and how we can navigate bringing diversity into our own context and 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 navigate what that that will bring i'm so grateful for what you're doing in our world it doesn't seem very great but you know what we're so grateful for what you're doing in our world 
and in our hearts. You're growing us, and we're grateful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, God bless you, and we'll talk to you very soon.